What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And right here I am doing some rope pushdowns because this is actually a uh, arm workout. And it's going to be an arm workout that we will start out with the triceps, as you can see, because the triceps compared to the biceps is my weak point. And for people who don't know yet, if you want big arms, don't just work on the biceps, but actually the triceps make up most of your arm mass. So having bigger triceps is always going to be good for overall mass in the arms in general. So the reason why I like to start out with a rope pushdown is first of all warming up the triceps themselves get some blood in there but also warm up the elbows you want the stress of every exercise to be on the muscle and not the joints and because i know that a lot of people have a lot of achy elbows you might want to start out with an exercise that already fatigues the triceps beforehand and also put some blood in there to loosen everything up so that you don't have that elbow pain that much and that's the way to go if you want to go all out on exercises like a skull crush for example which a lot of people have trouble with now this is just a rope push down and it's an easy exercise for a lot of people but you really want to master it to get the most benefit out of it so what i'm really focusing on here is when i'm going upwards that i feel a stretch in my triceps so i really try to keep my elbows a little in front of my body but make sure that i go up high enough so i can feel the stretch in all hands of the triceps but more importantly when going downwards i'm really trying to squeeze a tricep so the most easy way to do this is to actually go uh, move your upper arm backwards as you go down so you can actually get a full contraction in those triceps and that way you can really maximize that exercise to actually carve in those tricep details in your small head which in my opinion is definitely possible because when you do an actual isometric contraction at the end you do contract different muscle fibers in a different way and if you do that consistently year after year you will have a different look to the muscle that's my opinion so as i said i like to do the rope push down first before doing any form of skull crushers now this is an incline dumbbell skull crusher which i love to do the incline variation allows me to more easily stretch those triceps as you can see as a dumbbell dumbbells go uh, beside my head if you watch the tricep you can really see that it starts to stretch to the max and then when I'm going upwards, I contract it as hard as I can. And that way there is a full uh, tension throughout the entire range of motion. So the time under tension there uh, is very good, which promotes tricep growth. You can really see if you look at the triceps themselves, the tension is not lost. And in my opinion, that is one of the most important aspects about building quality muscle to keep constant tension on the muscle while doing the exercise. And the score crusher is really great for working the long head and the medial head, in my opinion. When you're doing a score crusher like this uh, beside the head, so the dumbbells actually go to the sides of your head, you work the long head, yes, but because you're also able to press up a little bit, you work the medial head as well, which causes the thickness of your triceps to improve. So the long head of the triceps is the biggest part, which you always want to have improve. If you do a frontal bicep, for example, the hang downwards, that is caused by the size of the long head. And the thickness overall of the triceps is caused mostly by the medial head it also really helps in pressing strength as well so i really like to do this exercise also because both arms are doing it separately so you notice if your left tricep for example is weaker you will notice that in this movement so if you want to balance your triceps out stick to moves like this and realize which arm needs more tension than the other to be able to fit a problem like an imbalance in bodybuilding because that needs a fix now i'm going as heavy as i can with correct form 
Obviously, you can go a lot heavier with more sloppy form, but sloppy form or loose form is simply the form that you can't really feel the muscle. It's all going to be directed to the joints. So the heavier I go, the slower the weight moves, the more concentrated I am, the more focused on really focusing on the muscle and not on having the stress go to the joints. Because if that goes to the joints, it will have impact on your elbows for years to come, which disables you to do all of the exercises necessary to grow this tricep. So here you can see I'm not forcing anything, simply going to failure with a slow range of motion, keeping the tension on the triceps, saving the joints, which is very important for a body builder. And that was the heaviest set of the incline double score crushers. And then we move on to a lighter set of 20 kilos, I believe. And then we're again doing to, going to do as many reps as possible uh, although the rest in between the last set and this set could have been a little longer to extend this set, I think I was only able to do 9 or 10 reps on this back off set, which I like to call them. It's less weight, and with less weight you're supposed to hit a little more reps compared to the heaviest top set, so you can actually get stronger in two rep ranges rather than one. So. Optimally, you try to get stronger in the 8 to 10 rep range or, you know, 6 to 10 rep range and the 10 to 15 or 12 to 15 rep range. So then you have two rep ranges in which you get very strong and the stronger you get in both, the more development you will get in the muscle you're working. Now, this is one of the best exercises to build the triceps, hence if you do it correctly. You can also do this with your body weight, but for a lot of people that will be too heavy and too complicated to get that mind-muscle connection going in the triceps and it will simply go to the chest. Here you can see the muscle in action. If you look at my chest, it's working a little bit, but the tricep is working much more. The key to making a tricep work more than the chest is to not lean forward try to keep your body as upright as possible and try to have a nice and narrow grip and keep your elbows as close to your side as you can so when you go down you should feel around a 90 degree mark a stretch in the triceps so when your arms are just about parallel to the floor that's when you should feel a stretch in the triceps more than the stretch in your chest and when you feel that then you know you're doing the exercise correctly and when you're then going upwards really try to focus on contracting those triceps as you're going up really extending the tricep at the very top making sure that the tension is not lost at all so when you go all the way up a lot of people like to rest for a second but i like to spend that second in contraction rather than letting the load rest on the joints which obviously is not what we want So I mentioned you could also do this with the body weight, but I'm choosing an assistant uh, dip machine here. It's also assisting in the pull up if you wish, but it really is nice if you're able to have straight legs here because it makes it a lot easier to keep an upright upper body. You can really see here that I'm not leaning forward. At least I'm trying my best not to lean forward because that way you can really hit those triceps. So don't go too heavy to begin with. Go nice and light. If you have a machine like this, make sure it supports your body weight easily so it feels quite easy to go up and really focus on the mind muscle connection. When you get that down, you can go heavier and heavier and still feel it in the triceps rather than the chest. And this is actually a quote new exercise I've been trying. I liked to do um, dumbbell extension and overhead dumbbell extension with one arm behind the head kind of like this but this one is with a cable and to me it provides a better tension over the path of the rep so when i'm going downwards the stretch is incredible when i'm going all the way up i can really contract the tricep as well which is always awesome usually with the dumbbell when going all the way up the contraction is pretty much gone and you have to use you consciously use that mind muscle connection to get uh, the contraction going because otherwise it's simply resting on your joint 
But here, I still feel, even though the stress is still going straight down through your arm, the tension isn't really on the joint as much because it's still pulling on your muscle. So definitely try this out. Uh, I am using a single rope here. So this is actually from the um, attachment brand Tryon from Spain. I got this a uh, good while back. So this is just one of their pieces that I like to use for specific specific work like this you can also do a single arm uh, rope curls with this for hammer curls of course but this is an amazing example of what you can do uh, for the triceps really focus on each individual tricep to make sure to get the most out of it and on a side note my lean bulk is going pretty well <laughs> trust me i'm doing my very best to eat as much as i can but i'm still pretty lean i have a little bit of fat here and there especially around the uh, hips and uh, the waist which for me is the first place the fat goes but hey the chest the back the arms still look pretty good which is what a lot of people like to see anyway when you're doing a lean bulk even though it's called a lean bulk you don't want to stay too lean which i did in the past and that uh, prevents you from really growing some quality mass in the off season which is my plan right now for the mr olympia so that's why i'm really working on the weak points which is why i'm having this separate arm day in the first place all the details really do matter so first i did all the tricep exercises I believe there were four tricep exercises and now I'm doing some bicep work and this is one of my favorite ones that I've been doing lately for a month or two I'm doing this on the actual belt squat machine from ATX if you don't have this machine uh, you can use a Swift machine because what you're using it for is you pretty much need a bar to be suspended in the air parallel to the ground so you can actually uh, hang over it and you can actually also uh, change the height of this bar. You can do that with a Swift machine as well which is why I'm recommending that but you can hang over this bar and kind of use it like a concentration curl but slightly different. You really don't have to focus on anything but contracting that bicep. So go all the way down. Don't overextend the bicep in my opinion. Go all the way down slowly. Really feel the stretch in the bicep and then go all the way up and contract it as hard as you can. And a lot of people find this difficult, but this is due to experience. When you're going all the way up on a, tr on a bicep movement, you want to feel that peak contraction. Um, for a lot of people, as I mentioned, that is a difficult aspect, a difficult term, kind of abstract, because, hey, when you're going all the way up, you're contracting anyways, right? Well, there's a difference between just contracting and getting that peak contraction, because it literally feels like a bicep will tear apart, will explode when I'm contracting this hard. And I believe that is one of the factors why my triceps are a strong point for my upper arms, obviously they can be a lot bigger but compared to the triceps the biceps have always been a little bit more developed because i have probably genetically a very easy mind muscle connection with the biceps allowing for a very strong contraction at the top and allows for a better growth of the bicep overall so don't underestimate that so-called mind-muscle connection it simply is a name for the perceived uh, tension on the muscle so the more tension you're able to perceive so if it literally hurts at the very top to contract it instead of just a regular contraction then you know you are actually recruiting more fibers more motor units in the same contraction under the same weight but because you're recruiting more it will have a bigger effect for muscle growth and the way the muscle will look overall here you can see some of our dumbbells. We have dumbbells in this 100% fit gym, our own gym, ranging from 2.5 kilos to 70 
kilograms. All of them are hexagon dumbbells, which means they have six sides. So if you throw them on the ground, they won't roll away very far at all. They stay put in place. And they are actually in steps of two and a half kilograms within each dumbbell. So if you can only do 50 kilograms, a lot of gyms then have all of a sudden 60 kilogram dumbbells. The difference is way too big. So for us, if you can do 50 kilograms for 10 reps and you only want to go one step higher, you can choose 52 and a half, which is amazing for me because that way I'm able to progress all the way up to 70 kilos, which I'm already able to do uh, 12 reps with for the chest. So we probably will invest in uh, dumbbells to 80 kilograms again. But this is the last set on these hanging dumbbell curls, which feel incredibly amazing so if you're able to do them and you are able to contract the bicep nice and hard definitely try it out and then this will be the last arm exercise for the day they are actually hammer curls but one arm at a time you see a lot of people do alternating hammer curls but to me the the moment that you do one rep with the right arm and then move to the left arm the right arm is resting so Yes, it does extend the set because you're resting in between each rep. But at the same time, the time under tension is lost in between every single rep. So you're simply resting at the bottom every single time the other arm is doing a rep. So I am doing a constant uh, tension here. So going up and down every single time with one arm until that arm reaches failure. And that way you're not able to go as heavy as you would go alternating the arms. But that doesn't matter because bodybuilding is not about the weight. It's about the mind muscle connection making sure the muscle is doing as much effort as possible with the weight that you are using so the hammer curls they work the brachialis as you can see next to the bicep there you can see another bump and that is the thickness of the biceps that actually promotes how thick the bicep looks from the front so if your bicep is a nice peak but if you actually have your arms next to your side you look in the mirror and you're not happy with how thick the bicep looks then this exercise is the best one to use anyway guys this was the workout of the day i hope you enjoyed watching it and i want to thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden